Thanks. Okay. Call the meeting to order. So, thanks, Luke. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, being here, uh, first order of business is administration of the oath of office. We're going to swear in our new board members. All right. This is it. The big step on it. So we, um, just in the interest of time, I hope you don't mind, we, we usually do it as a group. Is that okay? Just because there's three of you. Yes. So come on up. Yes. yes. We just give them a choice. Okay. Of the person. Okay. Come on up. You stand right here. Yeah. Is that okay? We got to get visual. Oh, yes. This is camera time. <laughs> camera ready, friends. Yep. All right, so please just repeat after me. And there is a word choice, so I will say I, and then you say your you fill in your name. Don't say Molly, just say your own name. <laughs> and then um, do so solemnly swear or affirm. You could pick whichever word you want, and then we'll go through. And I'll try to pause so that there's a ready flow. Are you ready? All right. I, Ryan Jurgensen. Do solemnly swear or affirm do solemnly affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution that I will support, support and, and defend, defend the Constitution, Constitution of the United States of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution, Constitution of the State of California, California against all enemies against, against all enemies foreign and domestic foreign and domestic and, and allegiance, and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and to the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which the duties upon which I am about to enter. I am about to enter. Congratulations! No turning back. Sure. I'm going to take a tumble. One, two, three. One, two, three, and then one more together. Yeah. That's exactly right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I just wanted to also say congratulations thank and thank you Sorry. so much, each of you, for writing. It's a it's a job of service, and without the three of you, we can't run our school. And so we just really appreciate each and every one of you so much. So thank you very much. And we're going to have our outgoing board um, come in. So we will have outgoing and coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, congratulations. Thank you. Great. All right. Squeeze in. Right. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Excellent. All right. Get those photo ops. All right. So first order of operation is we do want you guys to each sign. Oh, oh, Mike and Liz, if you want to take a seat over yeah. here. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Oh, you can you can you Break it back for my Get in here. Sorry. Okay. All right. This is it for, for sure. Awesome. 
This wasn't in the minutes. Oh, wait, 10 more, 10 more. <laughs> this, wasn't, this wasn't in the minutes. It's not approved. And you get to take your seat. No? Yes. Yeah. Water lines spilled over in the car, so I'll only... Oh, it'll dry. At least it's only water. Will you be seeing so We're going to call you back up so you can't pay you that, right? We know. <laughs> no escape. No, no escape. It doesn't, doesn't matter to me right now. Unless Molly put credit for me. Whereas, you know, here's all fabulous. Thank you. Thank so you so much today. So it's. <laughs> All right. So the first order of business, and this is unusual for us because we've nor we've never had, well, kind of three elected people at the same time. Um, but normally, what we do is we move right into um, the election of officers. And so um, Brian is the incumbent. I'm just going to have you run this part if you don't mind. Sure, I'd be happy to. <laughs> he didn't know. So, do we call it to order, or we're good with that? We're on election of officers. You already, yeah. You just move to the next item. Okay. So next item is election of president of the board for 2023. And normally, there's sort of three positions. There's the election of the president of the board. There's the board clerk, and then there's a member. So if there's three people, you'd want to select one of you to take the turn of being the president, another person to do the, the job of the clerk, which that job is that you do a lot of signing, assigning a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. And also when the president is not able to be here, usually the clerk takes that position. And then the member is, is a member that uh, participates and then can also rotate into the clerk position if the clerk is taking the president. So if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so I would, we can discuss, nominate him. Sure, I would nominate Ryan for president. Yeah, that sense. I, I'd be happy to serve as president if you support me in that. Okay. So I second the nomination, or how does that work? Exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a vote? Okay. We just vote the three of us, so, right? I think that's right. So we'll just be in debate. We're all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. And uh, for the clerk of the board, I would probably nominate Ted, if that's agreeable with the two of you. Me. I have a lot of time that you guys don't have, and I can do a lot of research and um, other, you know, I've looked up stuff for um, classes mm -hmm. that we can take, and I don't know how that goes with, you know, if you support that financially or not, but there's a number of classes offered by the um, California School Board Association that I think would be really helpful for us, and I just um, would like to have a little more involvement <clears throat> and just, I don't know, a member. <laughs> I don't know. Well, they're all, all three are equal board equal, representatives. Equal voting. It, it, all the clerk does, it doesn't preclude a, anybody from doing research or for finding classes or whatever. The, the clerk mostly is the signer. And then also when the um, president out, the clerk usually steps in as president at that time. But you're all three equal. Equal right. voting members of the board. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you have any uh, discussion or any preference any other way, Ted? No, that's fine. By me. Okay. All right. So, I go ahead and nominate and vote for Ted as the board clerk for 2023. And this is just for one year, and then we would then make some other election for this right here and so on. I'll second that one. Okay. And all in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, so we've got the election of officers. Um, now we move on to appointments. Uh, Secretary of the Governing Board. Is Molly. Is Molly Barnes. Molly. Governing Board representative to the Alameda County School Board Association. So Linda, this might be something you're interested in. So there's three <laughs> different um, positions. Um, and again, normally 
the three mm -hmm. board members take one of them. So there's the Alameda County School Boards Association representative representing San Oakland School, the governing board representative to Tri Valley SELPA. That's the SELPA is our um, special education mm -hmm. consortium. So it's a really important um, represent, representative that can needs to go to those meetings. They're orderly. And then the governing board representative to the board policy committee is another really, they're all three actually really important um, roles. And that one is like, they look over the policies that come out about quarterly as well from CSBA. Um, the one that's uh, the county is actually housed at the Alameda County Board of Education, which is um, on, I don't know, Winton Avenue in Hayward. And those are um, about quarterly as well. We'll get information. Um, Liz went to those throughout the four, her four years, I believe. Uh, uh, Mike and Denise served on our SELPA and Mike and Denise uh, switched being on the board policy committee. So they're all really good um, groups to be on. I think the one that might take the most time since Linda brought that up, I mean, you guys can decide, but the SELPA is pretty regular and you really wanna be well-versed in kind of that board packet, packet. Um, so, but they're all equally as important. Um, and again, as Ryan said, you can rotate at the end of each year, so you'll get exposure to the other types of um, experiences as well. So do we jump in and choose one? If is that the point? You guys You'd like discuss? to volunteer to, to head one of those as the governing board or representative? And, I think and I prefer the meetings. Alameda County School Boards Association. That would be great. I, I've been I on a number of being, boards in the yeah. past, so I kind of know some things. Great. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> And do you have a preference, Ted, of um, what you would serve on? I'd probably do the board policy committee then. Um, I don't have enough time to do the SELPA as well. Okay. All right. And I can do SELPA and you do SELPA. Mm -hmm. Does that sound okay with both of you? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And the Title IX officer, would you mind giving a little explanation of what that is? That's mandated that we have a Title IX officer. So if there is ever an issue that would cross over Title IX, then that information would come through me. Okay. Uh, trustee of revolving cash fund. We have to have a revolving cash fund and you have to have an administrator that signs off on that anytime that there's any transfers of funds. So again, that's Molly Barnes. Okay. Recipient of claims against the district. I'm happy to not be this person, but I think it's mm -hmm. me. So when there's a claim against the district, then the person that would have to, it would have to be named in that claim is Molly Barnes. Thank you. For being you're, that. you're welcome. <laughs> uh, authorized signature for the Sonoma Glen Unified School District. Uh, that goes through our banking. And again, that is the superintendent. So that would be Molly Barnes. Okay. And authorized signature for the small venue by school district, second signer. Second signer, in case I'm not available, that would be Mickey Thank Whitney. You. All right. And Ted and Linda, how do you feel about those? Oh, well, I, I knew about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. These are um, routine, but they do need to go through the board every year. So thank you so All much. All right. And a German in compliance with the American Disabilities Act. We need to read this. If you need assistance to participate in this meeting, please contact the superintendent's office at the school phone number notification by Friday noon preceding this meeting will enable the district to make reasonable arrangements to ensure accessibility to this meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do not. I've got it on my phone now. The rest of the closed. Perfect, thank you. And if there's a thing to sign up for speaking at some point, I should do that too. Thank you. Just to have something at the end to say when we have. Oh, it's right. Okay. So we will go ahead and close the meeting and go to closed session. Is that correct? No, we're going to open the meeting. We're going to yeah, we need to close the previous meeting. Correct. Adjourn it. Okay, go ahead and adjourn. Close the meeting. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little new to this. Uh, we will go ahead and open this uh, ceremony. Let's see, meeting of the board in public. And we call this meeting to order. Uh,
And then because Nikki forgot that glass suit was on there, we're going to have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought it was, I, I said that we're going to compact this. <laughs> so um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I read through the closed session items. Actually, there's a little okay thank you thank you for your patience i'm new to this uh okay the governing board encouraged pub encourages public discussion of all items on the agenda anyone wishing to address the board may submit a comment form uh, at the entrance prior to the start of the agenda item discussion, comment forms will not be accepted for any items once the item has been announced. A person wishing to address the board shall first be recognized by the president and shall then proceed to comment as briefly as the subject permits. There is a three minute maximum speaking time per person on a single agenda item. The limit on discussing each item is 20 minutes. Board bylaws 9323 states the board cannot comment on a non-agenda item However, the matter may be placed on the agenda of a subsequent meeting for action or discussion by the board for the Brown Act. Uh, please be advised our board meeting is being recorded. And we will, uh, let's see, we will leave for closed session. Today in closed session, the board will be yeah. discussing the following items. Item 2.1, public employee appointment pursuant to government code 54947. Item 2.2, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, pursuant to government code 54947. Item 2.3, conference with labor negotiator, pursuant to government code 54957.9. Negotiator Molly Barnes, employees organization, Sunol AFT chapter 1494 local, CSEA chapter 862, and management classified employees. Item 2.4, public employee performance evaluation uh, by its superintendent. Okay. We'll see you shortly. Uh, one quick note. This is a gavel that was used by my grandfather that I'm named after. He was a district judge many years ago in uh, the state of Idaho. So my parents said, here, it's just sitting on our shelf. Go ahead and use this when you're bringing meetings to us. So that's, that's a fun little memento. So. Uh, reporting out on closed session items. Is that correct where we are? Yes. Uh, and we do not need to do the Pledge of Allegiance again. Welcome. Uh, action on closed session. The board approved the following classified personnel items. One, special education instructional aid at 0.4375 MTE and one library clerk at 0.25 FTE. That was it, thank you. Uh, approval of the item number five, approval of the agenda. To approve motion to approve. Second the motion. Any discussion? All approved, aye, approved. <clears throat> Public hearing accounting of developer fees for 2021-2022. Government co uh, developer fee accounting, government code section 6606 requires that local agencies which collect developer fees provide to the public for review an annual accounting of these fees within 180 days of the close of each fiscal year and of each fifth year. Government Code Section 66001 requires the district to make additional findings if there are any funds remaining in the fund at the end of the prior fiscal year. And so, these are the developer fees. Uh, so this is here. just an update, and this is how where we stand at this time. Um, it was increased. We could see the amounts that were collected, and so there's a total with the ending fund balance of 116220 and 79 cents. Motion to approve this accounting. Uh, any discussion or comments? Thank you. All right, and motion to approve this accounting. Motion to approve. Second motion. All right, and uh, all approved. Say aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah. yeah, so developer fees, it's pretty prescribed. It's restricted on how you can use it, and, um, but we use it a lot for things like um, all the carpets that you see that get cleaned and updated, painting, kind of maintenance. Um, we have been trying to sort of save, um, to save our developer fees over the year. I think you have, I think you have five years to expense your developer fees. Does that sound right? And so you, you do have to spend them. And um, currently what we've been trying to gather fees for is the replacement of the one portable that is pretty in really bad shape out here when the floor is falling out. So that's a part of our goal is to use these funds and this will about cover it um, to replace the one. Are building. we gonna be replacing that whole portable anyway with the front the bond money? So uh, one of the things that we wanna do is replace all four portables back there. But this one is in dire states, and we didn't know if the bond was going to pass or not. And so we've been trying to save for the past several years to get enough money. And we we still will have to contact the company and see what that would, how much that would take, because you have to you have to actually get rid of it, tear it down, and there's a whole bunch of steps there. But that was a real big priority. If we don't use it for that, then we'll use it for other updates. You can use it for updates on campus because of it's connected to increase in student population on your campus in Maryland, Terry, that's fit under that developer fee okay. language. So as a point of order, do we go through each of, should go through each of the items and then there's a subsequent voting on them as well? Isn't that right? The public hearing is just to let, the let people know talk. that and this is the and later on there'll be a resolution. So item nine, right? That's the resolution, right? Exactly. It needs to be submitted by December 2025. Yeah. Okay. Uh, item seven: Board and staff reports and communication. Uh, 7A 2022-2023. First interim reports. <laughs> Hi, Tara. Good to welcome, Thank welcome. You. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you. Well, good evening, uh, members of the board, Superintendent Fly, and um, also the meeting attendees. Uh, my name is Tara Stutches Owens, and I'm a director to or acting CBO for Snow Glen on behalf of. Um, at the Alameda County Office of Education. And tonight I will be presenting the first interim budget report. And the first interim budget um, covers July 1 through October 31st with projections until June um, 2023. In addition, the first interim report kind of highlights the budgetary changes between what we um, projected at adopted budgets um, in June. So I'm just gonna talk about that a little bit. And before I go into oh yes before I go into that um, one of the most important items that dictates the changes in the first interim report um, since adopted budget is the governor's enacted state budget that was signed in um, August in August of 2022 and there were many changes um, that were incorporated into the first interim budget as a result of the, in, of the uh, excuse me as a result of the enacted state budget that have um, have positive effects for Sonoma Glen. Um, and the first one was um, the enacted state budget uh, provided a statutory COLA of 6.5% plus an additional LCF enhancement of 6.7%. And you're probably like, well, what does this mean for Snow Glen? It means that there is an increased um, per pupil LCF F base grant, which basically has increased our overall LCF funding in comparison to um, the adopted budget. And the LCFF funding is the um, greatest revenue source for all, mostly all school districts. And um, the second um, important thing of, from the enacted state budget um, was in order to help uh, mitigate ADA loss for schools, you know, with declining enrollment due to COVID, um, districts can now use the greater of their current year, prior year, or um, rolling three year average ADA. And so your ADA and your enrollment, that helps you determine what your LCFF um, uh, revenues will be. So that's a very important um, factor. And also, we got some new monies. <laughs> um, Can I just call you right there? So, because we have new board members. So, um, the adopted budget is historically adopted in June. 
And then, as Tara said, the governor's budget is usually adopted in July, or in this case, maybe it was delayed until August. So we have to go on the projections, and, that, and that's why we build our budget on the information we have at that time. And then it's like a moving target. It's, a, it's very fluid. It's an annual situation. And then, as she said, the, um, the COVID really uh, wreaked havoc on schools across, well, across the United States. Um, but, uh, California uh, schools have seen a decline, and that's that impacts our revenue. So to safe harbor, the um, governor came up with that idea of doing that sort of three or averaging, which, mm -hmm. which ended up as well was a recipient of that, that ended up helping us because right before the COVID, I think we were running at about 285, 290 enrollment. And um, right now we're at 270, which you'll see your roll part. So that's a huge drop for us. And so this uh, safe harboring um, really helped as well as that increased whole amount. So. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if we can go back up to the beginning. Uh, yes, one more. Um, yes, okay. We we'll just, oh, no. Uh, yes, we'll stay, yeah, we'll stay there for a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, one other portion of the enacted state budget, um, the governor, we got some um, new monies. And those are the learn, they're one time monies. They're the, um, the Learning Recovery Emergency Block Grant. So, no, got about 77000 and we're gonna um, possibly get the um, arts, music, and instructional materials discretionary block grant. That's about $169,000. And we got some additional monies for um, expanding, expanded learning opportunities. And there was also an increased the special education base rate. So um, it's, it looks like the enacted um, state budget um, was in favor of Sunol. So this is good. You know, we get more funding, we can use this funding for all of our expenses for, for, for the kids, which are our next generation. So just a little bit about, again, just to reiterate about our, oh no, <laughs> yes, thank you, just yes, go back up one more, yes, yeah, <laughs> thank you, um, just to reiterate again about our LCFF revenue um, sources, again, we got an increase in our COLA, and um, like I said, your, our ADA and our enrollment, um, that's what triggers our, our LCFF dollars, and again, um, there was an increase in our base funding. So you can see that um, we got some increases and the, the, the base funding is based on the grade spans. And also we um, also get supplemental and concentration funding. And we get those fundings because we have unduplicated students. And unduplicated students are English learners, our foster youth, our low income students, and students who receive um, free and reduced price meals. So as a result of that, we got about $5,670 more for those types of students than we received that adopted budget. Okay, we can go up some more now for enrollment. Okay, and as Superintendent Barnes um, stated earlier, we did see a, a decrease in our um, ADA and enrollment um, compared to adopted budget. It, it did go down, but we have the mitigating factor um, for the, um, the three-year average rolling ADA, which helped us. We got about, as a result, we got about $166,000 more in LCF funding. That will definitely help us. Cool. Okay. Um, we have some federal revenues um, in comparison to adopted budget. Um, we're going to be getting our Federal revenues are about $19,800 higher, and that's um, due to additional um, unspent carryover from 21-22. That adopted budget, we really don't know how much we're going to, um, we're not going to spend or we're going to spend. So at first interim, we roll over those funds. So that increased our um, federal revenues. And this is where the biggest increase has happened at first interim. Um, our other state um, revenue increased by approximately $238,000. And that's due to one-time funds. Um, as I mentioned before, the Learning Recovery Emergency Block Grant, um, unused or unbudgeted carryover from the Universal PK Grant and in-person instruction grants. And then lastly, our local revenue, yes, increased by approximately $87,000 due to um, special education apportionment increases and also increase in Eagle's Nest revenues because um, we, I guess we're getting more student participation because um, you know COVID is not gone, but it's better. And so mm -hmm. students are coming back, so that's good. And I'll explain later, uh, there's another chart that shows some of the revenues for Eagle's Nest and the, and the preschool. All right, and 
move along a little bit and talk about like, our expenditures. All right, um, between adopted budget and first interim, there was really no material change in certificated salaries, a small change in classified salaries, and that was due to the appropriation of um, ESSER funds to be, to be spent on classified salaries. And so we wanna make sure that we are spending our restricted dollars. So this, this, this does not mean that we got more employees, we're just appropriating the money so we can spend it because there are, there are fiscal deadlines to mean we have to, have to spend the money. And as far as employee benefits, you know, our, our employees get um, statutory benefits, STRS, PERS, um, FICA, um, they get health and welfare benefits, and those are all included in the first interim um, report. And we can move on to our additional expenditures, okay? We have um, books and supplies and services and other operating expenses, and um, materials and supplies have increased about to about um, $82,992. And again, if you have increases in your revenue, you most likely will have increases in your expenditures because you have to uh, appropriate those monies to, uh, to a budget account line. So um, the increases in these expenses relate because we have um, carryover and we have new grant funding. Okay. And again, like I said, um, in our services and operating expenses, they have increased by about $200,000. And that's because we're getting new funds, new one-time funding, new grants. We have lots of um, carryover. So we're just allocating um, these expenses. Okay, we can move. Okay, uh, interfund transfers um, are used to support other funds other than the general funds that may need help. And so for, uh, excuse me, for first interim, um, we are helping some other funds in the amount of about $101,000, okay? And also, um, sometimes our funds need a little help. They, they get a little short. <laughs> so what we do is, we, um, if we scroll up a little bit, um, I'm sorry, go down, <laughs> other way. Um, yes, um, again, sometimes our fun, other funds outside of the general fund need a little assistance to help to help with their expenses. So um, we, the unrestricted general fund um, contributes um, to these um, resources like the preschool, special education, the technology. And so total projected contributions from the unrestricted general fund are about 528,000. And it's, we get them from the unrestricted because unrestricted means you can, you can use them freely, but if they were, you can't transfer from the, well, yeah, <laughs> the, um, the restricted side, I mean, they have, they have rules. You can't just, you know, give the money to any kind of fund. They have, they have rules. So that's why we have to use unrestricted funds. Okay, we can, yes. <laughs> all right. And then we have um, components of the ending fund balance. So after all Sano's um, expenses, after all our bills are paid, we have about $1.2 million left. So that's good because um, it, it has uh, increased from adopted budget, but we have to allocate that 1.2 million to these various components, um, our stabilization agreements, there are other commitments. Um, we put about $150 for special education reserve because special education expenses are, 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 are high. And the most important one on here that we have to designate is the um, REU, which is the Reserve for Economic Uncertainty. So it's kind of like a like a bank, like a um, like a, a savings account, and it has to be because of Sano's ADA. It's five percent. Other school districts may have three percent, two percent, but this percentage it, it's it's a percentage of your total expenditures plus your transfers out. So if we're able to um, put money here, we are we're good. We're fiscally solid because yes, that's important. And so after all of that, we have about four hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars left that does not need to be appropriated. So it's kind of like unrestricted. Can you clarify what the stabilization um, line item is? Yes, which one? The, the committed? Committed or stabilization, yeah. Yes. What is that? Um, do you want me to take that? Here? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so um, the board from probably 2010, 2011, they were recognizing that the 5% required for reserve for economic uncertainties um, it's a reserve for economic uncertainties. And when there's economic uncertainties, you cannot touch that money unless, unless in order to maintain your positive certification. And so they, I think in their wisdom, decided to have their own availability of funds for stabilization that you can access. And so that's where they put. 
put those funds aside. And they, at that point, you can see there's 120 for stabilization. There was 60,000 um, for any other commitments that might come up unforeseeable. And then there, there's a, always a huge worry about special education because you that 150,000, and these are all one-time monies, so they're not ongoing. And um, one child that needs transportation to Oregon to a special committee a special facility can take that $150,000 right away. So they, that was their vision at that time is just to always have these funds. Um, again, there's just one time, it, it, it's not something that can carry over, but it would help protect the district from having to come up with that, that sort of bigger amounts of money um, for those kinds of dire circumstances. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tara wasn't here, we did that, so I looked at her. I'm sure she did. <laughs> I know it's <laughs> Uh, so this this next section just talks about some of some of our other funds outside of fund one. You know we have our cafeteria fund, you know, scroll up. our um, deferred maintenance fund. I'm not going to go into detail. That's a lot. But basically, I'm in this report. I'm just basically saying what the beginning balance is, what um, expected expenditures are, what the revenues are, and then the ending fund balance. For each of those. But there's going to be a chart near the end of the presentation where you can see <clears throat> that outlines it more. Um, can you describe the special reserve fund other than capital outlay what that's used for? Oh, yes, that is. Let's go to fund 17. Yes, that's um, fund 17 is an extension of the general of the general fund. And um, you can the funds in there, they can be used for any any kind of um, any kind of a general expense other than capital outlay. And in order to use those funds, you have to first transfer them back to Fund 01 um, before you can before you can spend. And then it's unreserved immediately thereafter, right? I Meaning you can use it basically for anything other yeah. than yeah, other than capital, capital outlay. Outlay. No, no land, no building improvements. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, you can scroll up. Oh yeah, until we get to the charts. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, I'll come back to that one. Okay. If you could, yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. So this is kind of this, uh, this chart right here. Summarizes our um, revenues and expenses as a first interim. It's just broken down. <clears throat> so as you can see, our total revenue is um, 4506000 And we can go to our expenditures are um, projected to be four point four million five hundred sixteen thousand. And keep going. And just to point out, um, we, we, we're ju just deficit spending by, by a small amount. When I say deficit spending, that means that our, our expenditures exceed our revenues, but that is normal for most school districts. Um, and again, our ending fund balance is 1.288 million and can go up. And again, these are the components of the ending fund balance. And we kind of have a, a little cushion of about $452,000 right now. Next chart, um, in that previous chart, it also broke it down by um, unrestricted and restricted. So the only difference between this one is now you just see it in total. This is a combination of um, unrestricted and restricted just on, on one sheet. So it's the same numbers. Okay. And then I wanted to kind of wanted to show you a graphical representation of Sonoma Glenn's revenue. So as I mentioned earlier that, um, the, the majority of the funding we get is tied to ADA, which is our LCFF. So this means that um, the, the source of revenue is 71% um, of our revenue, which was 4,000, sorry, $4,506,000 is tied to LCF sources and the rest are broken between federal, state, and local. So that's why ADA and enrollment is very important because that's the bulk of um, a school district's revenue. Question: Did you just say that it's seventy percent of four million? Is that what you just said? Seventy seventy one percent. Seventy one percent of four million. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just a point of that's order. That's a big number. I know, Andrew. I, really well, I just your engagement. You. I know, but um, just a point of order. Our, our president, Sue. You would need, yeah. If you have a question on something on the but on the agenda, just make sure you fill out the card. Okay, well, I filled out the card for something else, but I had a question and she answered. Thank you. Okay. I'll go answer. No, it's okay. <laughs> please, please, yeah. please continue. Thank you. Okay. All right. 
see, okay, now, um, and this is a, a graphical representation of our expenditures. With any school district, um, salaries and benefits constitute about 80% of the budget. So this is normal. So this just shows us what I just said, what I just said, our um, salaries and um, our salary, salaries and benefits are 80% of our expenditure budget. Our expenditure budget is $4,516,000. And then these are the other um, categories, your books and supplies, service and operating experience, and then capital outlay. All right. Um, and let's see if we can get a little smaller. Um, they want to show the entire. Yeah. Yes, um, um, this basically is a comparison of our revenues and experience, excuse me, revenues and expenses from um, the last two reporting periods, our unaudited actuals, um, our adopted budget, and our first interim. So um, basically, if you want to look at the, the pink column and the purple columns, so that's what we're going to be comparing. Um, our um, revenues have increased about $504,000, and again, this is due to our um, increase in our LCFF funding, um, our COLA increases, our new one-time um, restricted block grants, um, carryover from the prior year that um, we're now um, budgeting as revenue. Okay, we move down to our expenditures. Um, our expenditures have increased about $370,000, but as like I said before, when your revenues increase, your expenditures most likely increase because you, have, you now have money that you need to appropriate to the different expense lines, okay. And we move down here, our ending fund balance has increased, which is good for um, from adopted budget to first interim about $346,000 and that falls down to the bottom line. And also it's good that we are, um, we're, we're not deficit spending in, our, in, in first interim, by a significant amount. Can we go back up a little bit? Uh, sorry, go down some more. Yes. Oh. At, um, adopted budget, we were deficit spending about 144000 but now we're only about $10,000, and that's because we have more income, more income now, and we are, um, yes, we have more income to, to spend. Okay, and we can move away from this and um, just a, a, another point, just to reiterate, we are meeting our REU, which is our reserve for economic uncertainties of two hundred and thirty thousand yeah. dollars. And this is a, just another um, graphical representation of the three different periods um, and how they compare and what our revenue is for them. Yes. So again, as you can see, our L LCFF sources are the greatest source of revenue for, for basically any district. Okay, you can move to the next chart. And then again, this is just a comparison of all the expenditures from the three different reporting periods. And um, our, let's see. Yes, <laughs> this is just another graphical representation of that. And it just shows also shows you the the, ex, the expenses total expenses per period on audited actuals adopted budget and first interim. All right, we're getting closer to the end. Do I have enough time? Yeah. You're going. You're going. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, uh, one of one of the most important aspects um, of the budget is the NYP, and because it projects the current year projections and also the subsequent two fiscal years. So this multi-year projection shows that Sano Glenn is projected to be able to meet its financial obligations for the current and subsequent two fiscal years, which, we, which equates to a positive budget certification. And again, we can start off at the top. Um, um, our funded ADA is expected to, to increase a little bit um, between the current year and the subsequent two fiscal years. And with that, there's gonna be, um, there's COLA increases. And because of that, our LCF um, funding each year is projected to, to increase, as well as there's gonna be um, increases in our different um, buckets of revenue. So overall, um, our total revenues are going to, you know, increase, um, not, not too substantially, but increase, um, 
the, um, over the current year and the subsequent two fiscal years. So can I just interrupt again? Yes. So just to tell the board too, you can see it, um, the 22-23, our current year, uh, the state of California in their wisdom, <clears throat> they um, decided to fund on AD attendance, ADA, average daily attendance, rather than enrollment. We're only one of six states, I believe, that does that. It's a money savings uh, measure for the state because it's obviously saves money for the state, but it costs the districts money. And so we're, our current enrollment is at 270, but we're only funded for 256. And again, what's farcical about this is when kids are absent, it's actually an increase in work on for our teachers. But anyway, it's the rules. And so you can see that on 23, 24, and 24, 25, we're projecting to, we're hoping to move back closer to pre-COVID conditions when we were running closer to that 290. Um, so we're being a little optimistic. And the reason that needs to be pointed out is if our historical trend is true to this year, then that optimistic outlook is not accurate. And we're, we're basing our multi-year projection with the sort of a uh, hope that we'll gain 11 kids. Ryan said that he would go and try to find me some more kids, but <laughs> I was hoping so. He's, he's yeah. contributed, you know, to work so far. Personally. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate the effort. So we got one more, one more coming up. This one's coming up, right? Yeah. 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 Anyway, I just wanted to point that out because that's huge for, that's what the whole budget is wrapping, wraps with enrollment and ADA. So you have to, I'm sorry, Andrew. Just say, I know it's so hard. Can we, can you wait? For well, it's appropriate to the moment. Otherwise I wouldn't ask it. Now. Supposed to but can I just ask you a question, please? Um, when you talk about the 5% difference that you're running right now of the 256 versus the 267, it, you feel like it's out of line because of COVID. What is typical? What would you expect typical in a typical year for your offset from, from your expected? Um, so if I if you say 267 next year and, and you have good attendance, are you do you expect a plus or minus two percent? But because you're off five percent and you're very concerned. It's 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 oh, impossible you, to predict. Are you looking at the number the, the number underneath that five percent? That's cola. No, no, no. I'm oh. looking at 12 over 256 is about 5%. Oh, that increase. And Sorry. if you go to the next year where you say your difference is you're going yeah. for zero, you're looking at truancy or people missing or people just choosing not to come to school, whatever it is that causes you not to get your ADA. What is typical in a good year? For, are you usually, usually really tight? Our ADA is usually about four. We went at 96%. Attendance. Thank you. So it's really four percent prior to COVID. Four okay. percent is four percent is, okay. is normal. Thank okay. you. I'm sorry I didn't understand. Thank you. I just no no no. It's interesting. It's interesting. We track this very very carefully. And mind you that before sorry no we're getting off task a little bit but uh, uh, <laughs> pre COVID when there was a cough like that we would say <laughs> come on down that's just a little cough. But post COVID, now it's because we really needed kids to be in school. It's better for instruction. It's better for learning. And it's sorry, that was just perfect. Thank you. And then, um, um, and uh, it's good for kids to have that continuity of instruction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now when we kids are coughing or whatever, we're like, oh, you have to go home. Mm -hmm. and, and and we really don't want, because that could wipe out a school. So, and now it's all these other diseases that are around too. But that, so that's why, again, the state funding on ADA not enrollment is really it's not okay on, in my opinion. It's hard on there, yeah. Because that doesn't make any sense. We're encouraging kids to not come to school. And, but yet then we, we're penalized for that. And again, the teachers work extra hard when kids are absent. They have mm -hmm. to give individual lessons rather than telling the whole class. So I'll get off my soapbox. It's irritating. We anyway. don't like it. well, yeah, it's wrong. It's actually unethical in my mind. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Tara. No, no, it's Back to you, ma'am. Back to you. Okay, let's be um scoot down to our our expenses. As I stated before, um, salaries and benefits constitute the, the biggest portion of a school district's um, budget. So um, we have included step and in, in, step and in column increases for that. And again, we have our um, adjustments and books and supplies, our service and uh, uh, other operating expenses. You know, we have um, one time funds. So um, once the once the 
the deadline has expired for those one-time funds. We have to take off the expenditures related to them because we don't have any more money to spend for them. So the um, multi-year projection um, includes the fluctuations for that. And if you scroll down to the bottom right, not, not sorry, <laughs> right here, um, we have a, um, we are, uh, let's see, we are, we have a surplus um, for, um, 23, 24, and 24, 25. And another positive thing is that we have a positive ending fund balance um, each year, which is which is very good. You never want to have a negative ending fund balance. And um, another very important point to bring it is that once we designate um, these ending fund balances, we're still able to meet our reserve. We're able to apply and appropriate all of our components of ending fund balance. And so this puts us in a a, a good position that we're able to meet current year and um, subsequent two year two year um, fiscal obligations. So the MYP, the multi year projection, is a big part of AB twelve hundred. If you have to show that you can meet your budgetary obligations for the current year and the two years out, this is a really critical document and true story and story about our budget. And that's how you maintain your positive certification, which is always a board goal to say um, have that fiduciary responsibility so yeah. okay. and i know um snow always we, we like to budget conservative conservatively mm -hmm. and also just also remember that the budget is a moving target because of new um, education laws that come out so there, it's always going to be um, a moving target and proceed to the next all right so we also have some um, local programs our um eagles, it's our eagles nest and preschool um our estimated as i stated before our estimated revenue has increased because we're getting more participation and and because of that um some uh, sometimes the general fund has to contribute to eagles nest because there isn't enough revenue but but first interim projections project that there will be a surplus and so that surplus will go back to the general fund Um, a little bit needs a, will need a little bit of assistance, so they'll get a contribution because their estimated revenue is one hundred thousand dollars, but their projected expenses are one hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars, and so they'll they'll need a um, contribution. But there's a, it's an offset, so the contribution will be about fifteen eight eight eight. We can scroll to the next one. And also, as I stated before, this is um, just a, a chart that shows. The, the other funds outside of Fund 01. So you can see the beginning balances and just the activities that we're projecting um, in these different funds and the ending fund balance for each of those. And lastly, um, this is just a chart <laughs> of all of the different um, one-time funds that, that are out there. There are so many. And so this chart just shows what they are, their resource codes, because that's how we that's how we budget in our in our um, financial system, and then the end the end dates for those as when those funds expire. And if we can go back all the way to the top, this in conclusion, um, I think it was like page page four. I just wanted to show you just looking forward. Uh oh, yep, mm -hmm. it'll be, yep. Sorry, for the <laughs> oh, you know, if there are, no, I'm sorry. Just continue to scroll up. Uh, I'm sorry. Our General account. fund summary. Um, it's going to be after, yeah, it's going to be after, um, after the, after I talk about the funds. So, um, yeah, go all the way. Yep, continue, continue, all the way. <laughs> yes. I think it looks like this. Oh, thank you. Is that the one? Yes, thank you. After all the phones. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? Right there. Looking forward. Right forward. Just looking forward. Looking forward. Oh, <laughs> hey, sorry. Yeah, so just in conclusion, these are some of the um, things that are going to be coming up. Again, we're going to get <clears throat> one time funding for the arts and music and structural block grant. Um, there, there's going to be um, the governor's budget in January, so he's going to come out with a whole new set of rules, a whole new, a whole new um, gamut of other things that we'll have to put <laughs> into um, future budgets. Um, then um, we're going to come back for second interim, and so then you're going to see the difference between the adopted budget, first interim, and second interim. So that'll happen in March. Um, and then the governor is going to do the, uh, the budget again. There's going to be a May revise, so that's going to help us um, develop adopted budget for 23-24 and the subsequent two fiscal years and then we're going to have some LCAP development that's a big um a big a big task 
And then in closing, we're gonna do estimated actuals and we're gonna do um, budget adoption for fiscal year 23, 24 in June. So that completes my presentation for our scene. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, the financial report even gets some uh, applause. It's great. Wow. It's so I love it. And it's, it's always great when we have a financial report and we have good news. Yes. The moving target's moving, but it's moved in a good way this time. So that's, that's great to have. So thank you very much. And we look forward to having you back in March. Um, so next uh, item is 7B, the enrollment report. As I said, we are at home study, same as before, 270. Yeah. Great. 7C, superintendent's report. All right, my report's got a little long, so I'll try to be quick. All right, our school motto, as you guys know, is together are we in 2023, and it's about to be 2023, so this is the last time we'll be together in 2022, so we're right there, together are we, starting in January. Um, I have some handouts that I just want to share, it's just information, but really great stuff going on at our school, so I love to brag and share. Um, we haven't had winter concerts uh, for three years because of COVID. So our music teacher came up with a really great idea that's still safe because when kids are singing, they're actually, you know, there's a lot of expelling going on. And so, uh, but we're having informances. So she took, um, instead of having a huge auditorium jammed full like sardines in the beautiful auditorium and all these kids, different kids singing, she, we're going to have, because most, everybody likes to see everything, but parents really like to see their kids. So her vision was to have the parents invited to their children's participation. So take one and pass it down. You're welcome to come. Super cute. This week. Um, next week. This coming. This coming. So you better be there. Yes. And then um, Sonoma Lives Gives Glenn Gives Back is a wonderful pro program that we've been involved in for Cheryl is 10 years, 12 years, a long time. A long time. Um, we adopt a family from Viola Bly. Oh, I, I don't think I have enough for everyone. Oh, sure. Okay, <laughs> pass them around. Take a look. Ooh, uh, take um, pictures. Thank you. Sonol, Sonol Glenn gives back. And we have two wonderful families that are in need of support. Um, every year, the, the outreach to the community is fantastic and they there's a sign up genius that has specific things that you can always give gift cards and um they go we have two wonderful parents that go down to viola of life and deliver carloads full of, of presents and these families are asking for basic things like kitchen towels and i you know i don't know and the kids they ask and sometimes it's like a soccer ball i mean it's not you know the latest electronic gadget they really are grateful and our school does a fabulous job. The cutest thing about it too is they, um, it's a school-wide effort and then the classes take turns going down to the library and wrapping and the little kids get such joy out of wrapping these presents and they get a part of, um, give, you know, the experience of giving to needy families. So it's, it's beautiful. Another thing we're really excited, we're kind of coming out of the COVID, yes, um, our spelling bee. So we didn't do the spelling bee for two years and we did the spelling bee just in classes and we're, we're excited to announce a school-wide spelling bee, which will take place in January. It's usually pretty intense. We have some competitors out there that love spelling. And so we're very excited that this is coming back as well. And then this is a fun share. I just, I saw this yesterday or today. And Nancy Chiprich is a gem of a teacher. We're so fortunate to have her. All the teachers do an amazing job with their newsletters, but this is above and beyond. So I just want to tell you that, that they all don't look like this and they all don't have to look like this, but this is amazing. So I printed it to share because I was wowed by it. So take a look at one of your famous Sonal Glenn teachers and what's up happening in her classroom. And it's fun because you can see what the kids are working on. You can see kids in the act of working. There's pictures of board that the kids produce. Um, anyway, I just thought it'd be fun for the board, especially since there's new board members, to see what, what do the kindergarten and first graders do here at Civil Glen. So that's a great little um, share for you. Um, also, just wanted to report that we did have parent conferences November 14th through 18th. The teachers reported that it, they went really well. And every year for the last three years, we've tried something different because of COVID. We normally had parent conferences like the way they've been for 50 years. And then COVID, so we did it virtually. We found that we had closer to 100% participants when it's virtual because people can stop at their job and take a <laughs> lunch break at 10 a.m. to go to their teacher's conference. So it was super cool. Um, and a lot of times we had two more than one parent attending, grandma and you know, dad and mom and whatever. And so 
because of that, we decided to hybrid it and we gave parents the option. They could either come in live because some people really miss coming on campus live or they could do virtual. I think the teacher said they have about half an hour. So we're, I think we're gonna carry on with that new tradition. Um, the character trait, as, as the board knows, we celebrate, as, we have character trait as part of our LCAP, it's really important. Um, and so every month we celebrate a different character trait. And so November was citizenship, being a good citizen and December is fellowship. And the little kid says, what's fellowship? And we tell them friendship. And so there's things up on the board, there's posters all around. And then the teachers each month select two students that they want to um, honor that really displayed that particular character trait. And then I have the honor of going around and actually having them certificate and we take a photo. So it's, it's really cute. And um, I think it does a good job of just reminding kids about making those good choices. Um, and another thing I want to report is we passed the bond. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it passed with 59.62 percent a huge thank you to everyone i really want to give a special thank you to mike picard yeah. um, that gentleman worked incredibly hard and put in hours of sweat love and tears and i'm just honored to work beside you over this um, incredible. I know. Well, that's <laughs> me next. I'm and nope. you know, it was pretty hard. Um, we it was a second attempt, and you you put your heart into this. You love our school, and um, to have it not pass the first time was heartbreaking. And to have the courage to go forward and say this is really important, and it's good. I mean, so, yeah, um, <laughs> we need to have it. And. Your courage in doing that was just amazing. And so I love this school. I've given 15 years of my life to this school and knowing that there are funds available to ensure the continuity of this school and that, that this, if the state has matching, we before we have anything to match it with, um, was just heartbreaking. And so um, thank you. Thank you for your leadership in that. And also Liz Wanty Hall, Denise Camp Romo, and Ryan Jurgensen. So I just want to thank Vicky Lowell, there's lots of staff, but it was a lot of work, a lot of work to do and community members that came out in groves and helped us with walking and talking and the tour and everything. So thank you so much. Um, so now the work begins. <laughs> I was I was wanting to have t-shirts made that we passed the bond. Now what? Now what? <laughs> da, da, da. So a lot of work, a lot of work, but it's exciting work. And it's again to keep the, our beautiful school going. So thank you, everybody. Another fun thing I want to share is our own very important Mr. Hoxie recently was honored. So I just wanted to share, I know a lot of you probably read it, but local hero Lowell Hoxie quietly makes life better in, wasn't it, in Sonal. But this was honoring the work that he does throughout Pleasanton and Sonal. So he does do a lot for Foothill High School, the scouts down at the fair, fairgrounds. So he does cross city lines and <laughs> Uh, but he belongs to Sunol. But everybody knows how hard Mr. Hoxie works, and he his heart is always in doing what's best for people. Um, I love in here it talks about that he built his own uh, grill, and he brings it. He doesn't charge people labor because it's a labor of love, and um, just amazing. So our own very very. Well, well, well deserved. Very, very honored. Um, I do want to invite the board um, because we do have new board members. And so last time when there, we had three new board members, uh, the budget is very complex. School budget is very complex. So we do have a person that's associated with the school. It's Mr. Jeff Potter. He was Tara, uh, you know, maybe 10 years ago or something. He yeah. did your role. And then he moved up and then he actually was hired. He was stolen from FICMAP, which is fiscal crisis management team. Um, they actually go into districts where there's maybe some challenges, but he has this high expertise. And then he knows Sonal Glenn like the back of his hand. So he is so generous. And I have to be really nice to his boss, Michael Fine, who is a big wig in the state of California and ask, can we please borrow Mr. Potter for a little bit? And he's, he's willing to come into our school and do a board workshop just on budget with us. Um, so he'll talk about that um, that schedule that Tara was talking about, that, that rotation of events that happen every year um, through the state of California, but he'll get into a little bit more specificity about Sonal Glenn too. So I think that'll be really helpful. And that is on, it's a workshop just for the board, January 24th from 4 to 6 p.m. 
The other thing, CSBA, California School Board Association, they do a great job of offering trainings. And there's a new board member training uh, through CSBA. It's virtual. It's on March 1st. And you can, maybe we could send the board members an email tomorrow. And if you are interested, we'll register for you or we'll find out how to register. If we can do it for you, we will. Yeah. If not, we'll send you the link and you can register. And that would be, I think it would be good. And I'm glad it's virtual because that makes it a little bit easier to attend. I, I'll send you, I think there's some other trainings, but they weren't virtual. So I can send you that information as well. Um, I know Cheryl's going to talk about it. STEAM was on November 11th. It was super successful. Thank you to Cheryl Thompson and Ermila Padmanaba. Did I say it right? Yes, you got it. Okay. Been practicing. All right. It's, I'll, I'll let you go into details about that. But STEAM is very big in our school. STEAM friends stands for science, technology, math, engineering, engineering art. art. <laughs> so you got to get all those letters. Um, alphabet, there's all this stuff going on. And last but not least, we will go over the um, mid-year goals and objectives. So every year we set out things that we want to pay attention to. It has to be aligned to our LCAP, our local control accountability plan. And then we add a little more specificity. So um, back in August, we presented the goals and objectives, and this is a mid-year review. So we'll go through this quickly. Um, you all have this in your backup document. But a big one, there's four LCAP goals. And the first one is on lessons on that's what the work that we do. We're in the school of learning, we're in the business of learning. So this first one is all about curriculum and content. So create lessons aligned to the California standards that's done and ongoing, have spiral review of, of content. This was critical because of learning loss. So we recognize as a staff that if you're a third grade teacher, you might not just spiral back from second grade concepts to build that depth of understanding. So it's done, but it's on, that's one that's ongoing. Um, continue to implement Lucy Calkins reading and writing. That's our adoption for reading and writing is Lucy Calkins. It's ongoing. A new one that you might be starting to hear a lot about is science of reading, which cracks me up. I think that's the rebranding of tonics, but they call it <laughs> science of reading. So because it's very, very different. And, but it's phonics, but that's, so that's really coming out because they're realizing that phonics works. Um, so, and we do have a phonics program here. So continue with our history programs, continue with STEM scopes. STEM scopes is what we adopted a few years ago. Um, and some of the teachers feel like it's too dense. It's too, it's not as engaging as maybe some other programs. So we wanted to pilot twigs is another program. So we're just on the infancy stage of looking in case indeed we want to pilot um, something more wholeheartedly next year or adopt even. So I just wanted to alert to the board to that. Vertical alignment is really important. That's when you look at how kids learn as they go, as they matriculate up through the grade level. So we want to pay attention to that as well. So being sure that there's time for teachers to talk to one another about what did a third grader do with the, that then impacts the expectation for a fourth grade teacher. Okay. And I'm going really quick, so feel free to stop me if you have questions, board members. Um, all teachers will be provided with professional development to enhance their skills. Emphasis on social emotional learning and that, as we all know, with the pandemic has had a huge hit on both staff, parents, teachers. So we're looking at how do we build internal PD. So we, we um, have a TOSA, which is a teacher on special assignment. It's Miss Aurora Comments, and she has provided ongoing um, set professional development with the staff on our Wednesdays. So there's different topics that she's covered. Um, so I got it here somewhere, sorry. Uh, so far, we've had cooperative learning groups. We've had, um, how do you work with uh, students from differentiation of instruction? Yeah, find my list. Um, but I can give you that. Oh, found it. All right, with the lessons. Um, improving literacy across all areas of collaborative approach, anti-bullying curriculum, such as peaceful playgrounds, special ed and inclusion, early childhood development impact on learning is next Wednesday. So once a month, we have a topic that we want to provide professional development for the teachers. And um, self-care, she um, went to a training that the district sponsored for her to learn about breathing and meditating. So we do start out um, once or twice a month at our meetings. It's just doing so quick. It's just five minutes, just of breathing and sort of settling down after the craziness of 30 kids in the classroom. You need it. Um, here's the five children at home. You need it. Uh, six, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, three, all students will be presented with Smarter Balance Assessment. That's our state testing, the CASP, um, which is California Assessment of Student Performance and Progress. Uh, th that last year was the first year we had it after having a hiatus for a couple of years because of the COVID situation. 
Um, so that was sort of our baseline year. Guess what? It's an old line students did really well. <laughs> yeah, um, it's really amazing. We were ready for it not to be so well, but they did really well. Students may participate in at least one interim assessment throughout the year that's scheduled for January and March, continuing with lessons um, that, that's ready for these interims that's done and ongoing and continue with the programs that support the kids learning. These are supplemental, not to supplant. And those are technology-based um, programs that help kids in these, their learnings as well. This one is about technology. Technology is just that growing, moving animal. It just goes at all speed. It's just necessary in our world nowadays. So we wanna make sure that we provide the students with ample lab time, that they're continuing, that our staff gets training on IT best practices. They're doing a great job there. Our IT staff department is, is creating a training tool for the teachers and an access like a library of resources, which is crazy and amazing. Implement a plan for Chromebook end of life. They get used quite a bit. And so we need to always make sure our budget is, um, is nice and healthy so that we can support Chromebooks because again, that's the way kids learn nowadays is through their working on with their Chromebooks, continue to review and supplement programs for students. So every spring, we ask the teachers, so it's like say review in May, are the, the programs that you still like? Are there new ones? And every year they have one or two that they want to try something new. So we are pretty supportive of that. We have a good partnership with community clubs. Sometimes they will help sponsor some of those as well. And then all students will come to good citizenship. We we're just talking about that. Um, ongoing with camp cards. That's when you catch a child being good. And we have a champ card drawing on Fridays. Um, verbal kindness um, is uh, cards of verbal kindness acknowledgement to the character trait program. We're participating in the annual National Unity Week and Kindness Week. So we already did Unity Week in October. Kindness Week is in February. And is it on here? I'm really excited. We are reaching out. I'll see it on there. We're reaching out. We just found out that we want to do Kids Against Hunger program um, where they come and we'll ask for donations and buy, just even a $5 donation, it feeds a family for a week of food. And then they come with the kits and our, we have all the students assembly in and they put the kits together so again they're each participating in this program of giving back and feeding people in need it's beautiful it's a beautiful program we haven't been able to do it for two years because of covid it's coming back this year very excited and that'll be part of kindness week um support leadership class with monthly videos we never found somebody to do that for us we had andrew's dad or connie's dad we got a couple of those but that's still on hold and we already talked about the character trait recognition program Physical health, we just went over that. Currently continuing to work on 270, but we really need that number to go up. Maintain ADA aligned to CDC and ADHD, ACDPH, Alameda County Department of Public Health recommendations, then an ongoing seek out bond to ensure. So this was a goal that the board set last summer, set last summer to seek out the bond. And then what we're excited about is that it'll be successful. Done. Successful. Pass a different bond. Exciting. Okay, and then next, community relations, continue with communications that an ongoing through our newsletters, marquees in person and virtual meetings, attend community club meetings, that's our parents club meeting that's ongoing, attend a uh, business guild, I have not gone yet, but I would like to go, it's a good partnership, they're very supportive, they usually donate to um, kids in need, it's beautiful, very, very generous. Um, attend to SAC meetings. I've already attended a couple of those and I intend to attend some more. It's interesting to hear what's going on and that impacts um, the school a lot. Just had a meeting with Connie DeGrange, the president, because they're talking about the updating of the downtown, which impacts the school, specifically that little corner they want to There you go, Cheryl. They want to make it beautiful for a parent's corner. And I said, no, the parent's corner is down there. So I gave my feedback. And hopefully they'll help with that. Um, support community-centered activities ongoing, including working with us at PUC to explore hosting a screening of the film about the Muwikma and archaeological finds. So we're constantly trying to work with our partners throughout the community to um, cross over. Um, we're looking, I do have a, a wonderful uh, parent that wants to uh, reinvigorate Heroes Day because we haven't had Heroes Day for a couple of years. So I didn't. I just found that out, so it's not on there. So it's a lot. I think that's it. Oh, no, there's more. <laughs> board, board, it's all about relationships here. Board, all of us need to, we're the new governance team. So wanting to build that relationship so that we can be good stewards of our school and do what's best for kids is our top priority. Um, there's what we were, we've been talking about, the MIG trainings, master's in governance trainings. We'll research that and see if we can get that information to the new board members. 
and promote positive school culture is ongoing and teacher and teachers and superintendent with an employee employer relations committee. Um, I have I've had one initial conversation with the AFT president to coordinate it. It's kind of as an as needed basis, but it's available in case there's issues that come up throughout the, come up throughout the year. Okay, sorry. I know there's a lot. <laughs> we together we are we in 2023. Yes, place to grow. Thank you. Yeah. That was an excellent uh, review of our goals, objectives, and report from our superintendent. Thank you very much. Uh, that was 7C and C1. Item 7D is bond update. We've already talked a little bit about that. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. The bond passed. Uh, we will be at our next meeting in January having Mr. Isom, who is our bond advisor to the, uh, to the school board, uh, who will come to present on the bond. Next steps. Next step. We're going to explore and see if we can have the architect and maybe some others who can advise the school at that time as well. So next steps for the bond will be uh, to get some update on when we, um, when they sell the bond and when the funds become available and then going, the going through the process of getting projects with Mr. Hoxie and with the architect and, and lining up what we're gonna do. So anything else on bond update from you, Ms. Barnes? No, just, yeah, I think the next steps are gonna be critical and, and having that, um, the bond will need to be certified at the January board yeah. meeting and then, at that point, we have 60 days to create a bond oversight committee. And it's really prescribed by law about who could be on that committee. You have to meet the, the descriptors of, there's five different descriptors. They wanna have a senior citizen. They wanna have a parent that's in the community club and then a parent is two. And then a, somebody that's a senior citizen, somebody that's in the business guild or a rotary club, it has to be a business guild. And somebody that is a member of a tax group, it could be Jar <laughs> was it Jarvis Dan, Howard Jarvis. Uh, Howard Jarvis. And or the Alameda County tax group, but it, it has to be those five uh, descriptors, and then the other two are community members at large. So it could be, it could be so, so, so there's seven, seven. seven members of the bond oversight committee. And they recommend they meet quarterly. Um, they are advisory. Nobody from the board can be on the committee, nor could anybody from the school. The school employees. Now the school does serve as obviously the liaison to provide the committee with information, otherwise they wouldn't have any information. So we would put supply information that they over there, they provide oversight to make sure that things are moving forward. Yes, and the board is also talking about uh, people in the community who work in construction who may be able to give advice on this process. So seeking for people who are willing to volunteer, look over contracts, give advice, and then the board will make decisions going forward from there. So uh, item 7E, facilities and maintenance report, Mr. Hoxie. Well, it's that time of year. I got two seasons in the school. I got leave season and mid season. <laughs> <laughs> I got leaves and I've been doing leaves now for two weeks. <laughs> got a few more weeks of these. Unfortunately, my vacuum, new vacuum broke yesterday. Oh, wow. All the days is after a big storm. <laughs> Um, we got a, had a plug drain in the kitchen. Um, had to snake it out because it was compacted, pretty good plug. So we got it working again. With the heavy rains, we've got leaks in 602, 604 in the cafeteria. 602 and 604, they got 10 roofs on them and they're notorious for leaking anyway. Cafeteria, I can't figure out why it's leaking. Um, of course, if you're not standing there when it's pouring down rain, it doesn't leak. So I'm not exactly <laughs> sure I'm trying to figure out where that's leaking. <laughs> Haven't been up in the attic in the main building to take a look at that yet. Um, got a skunk issue under 604. They have to trap a skunk to get it out of there because they've been coming in in the morning that's been smelling pretty bad. Um, November, we had a property and liability inspection for Keenan. And we had no high priority items. They, they always find a few little items they want to write up, but um, we had no high priority items. And um, just been setting the risers up for the winter concert. Haven't done that in a couple of years, so I had to figure that one out. So, and, um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we got facilities that are doing well. Uh, Mr. Hawkins, keeping them, keeping them up. Uh, one one thing to note on the bond update that I didn't mention is uh, in the review of all the bonds 
for the Bay Area East Bay Times. I didn't recommend any of the bonds except for ours. Uh, yeah. our, our, school, our school is being kept up as well as it can, but we are in need of some updates, so we're glad we've got that. Um, item 7F, technology report. Um, I will keep this uh, pretty short. We've been very busy with providing uh, our usual support for our teachers, um, providing that Google classroom that we are rolling out and still filling up um, with information. So if a teacher has a question, they can go to it at a glance and um, uh, learn about how to use technology. Um, the other big ticket item that I just finished up this week was the fall one report of CalCAS reporting, which is very important for school district business because that is essentially um, the date uh, we capture all the data on October 4th and we tell the state that yes, this is what um, our demographics look like, this is what other um, aspects of our student population look like, and we um, finished approving, uh, we uh, approved it this week and we're waiting for final approval from uh, our city self uh, counterpart. Um, uh, that was without, um, currently that, that CalPAS data um, base is still experiencing issues um, statewide and um, the state is still trying to uh, fix that. But besides that, we're still um, banging down the hatches for our cybersecurity and uh, applying updates where needed and um, uh, working with, um, and fixing uh, things as they come. Um, so that is my short report. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, item 7G, Community Club Report. Michelle Thompson. Yes. Um, since the last uh, board meeting was in October, we have approved the Community Club budget for the school year. And we allotted about $26,000 towards student enrichment, which included about $11,000 in books for the classroom libraries, the libraries in the classrooms themselves, $15,000 towards teacher support, which includes uh, discretionary funds, support for the arts, music, and science labs, $11,500 for technology for all the online licenses that we need to run our program. So we'll expend approximately $54,000, $45,000 of which was raised by our 2022 walkathon this past one that we had. And that goes towards all our students, teachers, staff, and parent community. So we're grateful for all the general support from our donors for our walkathon so that we can give back to our uh, school community. We held a STEAM event, like Mrs. Barnes said. So um, that was held on Friday, November 11th, which was a non-school day. And that was um, uh, really good because we got a phenomenal attendance, about 130 students out of our 270 kids that come to the school. Yeah. They brought their um, adults, like half of the uh, about 75 adults attended. So out of those uh, students, 30 of them are middle school students that actually helped run the stations that we had. Plus, we also had five um, Snow Glen Eagle alumni who are now high schoolers came back and supported us as well by helping us run stations. We had about 15 stations because there's about five, uh, sorry, three stations per the five categories of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And Community Club provided a free taco um, buffet lunch and everybody comes for the food. food. That's exactly. why we're having food. <laughs> So even Tuesday, I know, Friday. I know it's Taco Friday. <laughs> and with, um, so with not having um, school, kids came for the lunch instead. The event kids. was sponsored by uh, CDM Smith, which is an engineering company that's associated with the Snow Water Temple. They gave us a donation of $5,000, which we uh, went towards the supplies of the event, um, science-related mm -hmm. books, which we gave to every participant who attended. And we also donated some to the library and that also went towards some microscopes that we purchased for the science lab, which we used at the station and then donated to the science lab. So we are really extremely grateful for their support, which is so generous. I have to say too, they they started out with like a small, I can't, was it $500? Yeah, I think it was like $1,000. $1,000, it donation. was a smaller amount and they, it was a really small event. And because we have such superstar parents that took it to this next level, they had so much fun. And they're yes, like, well, we want, and I think it was supposed to be he, like yeah, one year. Yeah, he came last year to the event. And then they're like, well, we want to do this again. And so it's just really increased in presentation and availability and then fun. So 
kudos to the parent, Cheryl's a big part of it, that uh, <laughs> make this happen for our students. Yes. Yeah. It's one of my it's favorite awesome. events. And the kids love it too. All the feedback, the buzz from, it was really cold in the morning, but by the time, you know, the day got, went by, everyone was all buzzing about all the uh, STEAM events that they could, uh, the activities they could participate in. Uh, Mrs. Barnes covered uh, the Snow Glen Give Back Program, which is sponsored by Community Club. So uh, providing necessities like clothing, towels, food, basics. So we have two families that we adopt. And uh, we also collect gift cards for teenagers because the teenagers don't really want the toys, but they want stuff that they can um, purchase themselves because we don't know what they want for clothing wise. They have their own styles. Um, the, uh, Mrs. Barnes mentioned all the kids wrap the gifts that we receive um, that are donated by our school families. And then our volunteers will take them out at the end um, just after school um, ends on Friday, 23rd. To new work for the bio anybody bio. and anybody yes. here that wants to donate, you can if you, and especially gift cards because it's probably too late to go on the sign of genius. But you're welcome to just drop them off. Safeway, you know, mm -hmm. ten dollars, twenty five dollars doesn't yeah. have to be a lot. Anything, um, well, fast Amazon food is what card. The kids like. Yeah, the, the kids love the fast food. food. <laughs> Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now you said Taco Tuesday, and now I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> now I want to talk. <laughs> and it is Tuesday. <laughs> so the last thing, looking ahead, um, we are going to support the Spelling Bee in January. Kindness Week will also support that in February. And then on March 18th, we invite you to our Spring Fling. <laughs> so we're uh, having a little early this year, but the planning's in the works. It's almost finalized. Uh, we're going to have a fun time at Mavericks in Pleasanton. So it's a little bit of a Western theme. Ride the uh, mechanical bull that's there. <laughs> <laughs> And that will be from 7, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So we'll have tickets on sale in January. So come join us for that. It will be a, a fun time. And that's all I have for right now. Thank you, Cheryl. A lot, of, lot of work. That's an impressive community club. Thank you very much. Um, but I can't support the mechanical bull. <laughs> I, just a side note, I had a patient this weekend that knocked out three front teeth oh, no. on a mechanical bull. So beware. Yeah. <laughs> so seven uh, H uh try yeah, if you want to see a photo, ask me later. Uh, 7 H Tri Valley SELPA report. Nothing to report at this time. Nothing to report. Excellent. Eight uh, community comments from the community. We have uh, two comment forms have been filled out here. We have uh, Mr. Andrew Turnbull. Yeah. Thank you. You want me? To, I don't know if you. That, is that camera live? Yeah. It's oh, live. Okay. Well, we don't get it right. Well, right, it's right. Not, it's okay. My name is Andrew Turnbull. I'm a uh, resident of Sonal since 1999. I'm a secretary of the Business Guild, and I'm the editor of um, Informed Sonal. Um, I'm happy to be here tonight to congratulate um, Ryan Jurgensen, Ted Romo, and Linda Hurley on their elections on behalf of the community. And if I understand correctly, my fellow Eagle Scout Ryan is the president of the board. Is that correct? Yes. I missed that because I was in the meeting with Connie. Yep. But yeah. congratulations to you, my fellow Eagle Scout. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, and I do want to say thank you to our, uh, you know, Liz Monty Hall and Ryan for your service on, you know, previous. But especially, I want to say thanks to my friend Mike Picard. I remember. Um, I made a video because we missed the um, 2020, I believe it was, we missed having our um, community tree lighting. So that year I made a video, but I went back to the previous year to grab some photos. And one of the photos that came up was Mike wearing this amazing <laughs> red outfit, nice. yeah. standing yeah. there yeah. pointing to the sign, go for the bond. And this, so this had to be 2019. So Mike Picard has been working on this bond getting passed for a long time. And it's admirable, as Molly said, that you stuck with it. And so I really thank you on behalf of the community for all of your effort. I worked with you on a video previously. It was too long. The community couldn't stomach that one all the way but we were able to get some other videos and i do want to thank two people about specifically about their videos 
I want to say a special thanks to Diane Everett. Diane Everett is a legend in this town. She continues to be um, a wonderful lady. And I asked her if she would present on why we have transfer students. Why do we have so many students here that come from uh, beyond? And the fact is when we look at the $4.2 million budget and about 3 million of it is all of that students coming. Well, it doesn't matter where they come from. If they come from another community and they're sitting in our seat, that's our money. And so we're thankful for all of those students. And I remember in 2000, uh, about three, when the school board had made a decision, and this was when Diane was still here, and they said, we want to recruit actively and bring in these students from other places because we need them. And so I hope that the community learned from Diane that we should absolutely celebrate all of those students that come and help, you know, fill our school and bring us the magic, what is it, the L word? Okay. This is okay. the daily, the daily attendance. 88. Oh, 88. 88. Thank you. Um, and the other one I want to thank is Ryan Jurgensen. You stood for, I have to, I, I don't, I haven't been able to measure it, but I'm thinking it was between around 10 minutes, trying to get two and a half minutes out of a message that summarized why we should trust the P, this board, I mean, the board that we had, the people that we've that we brought in on this bond. Yeah. But I delivered a two and a half minute video because I decided I was going to cut out every interruption of this gentleman. And when you look at that two and a half minute video, it was the kind of articulate that Durst was deserved to be in pro charge of this. And I, I'm so glad that you were willing to make that statement. Thank it you. was huge for the bond passing. Thank, thank you. And I and I apologize, I do have to interrupt. We have to limit comments to three minutes. Oh, am I above? It's, it's been four minutes. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I, I, okay. And so um, just, I wanna thank you all. Um, it's clear that this community is very supportive of the school. I'm happy to be part of that. I thank you guys all for your service. I thank you for your service. And especially Mike, congratulations, you're passed a bond. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Andrew. Um, he was at three minutes when he started to talk about me. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I let it go. One <laughs> but Andrew, too, um, on behalf of the board and the staff, we your uh, service to the community of putting forth all those editorials for the bond against the bond um, and all the videos uh, was, yes. you know, was, we don't have a newspaper that would have the editorials available. So that was that's a huge service to the community and a lot of work on your behalf. So we want to say thank you to thank you to you as thank well. Thank you. Happy to do it. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see, item eight uh, was community comments from the community. That's what we have. Uh, number nine, items for report, discussion, and possible action, 9A. I think there's one more person there. So yeah, there, there is. Uh, it's actually it's me. It's actually uh, it Linda Hurley, member of the board, and we'll save that for closing comments. So she's a member thank of the board. You. <laughs> she gets to speak, and she doesn't have a three minutes. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> this. We'll all be gone it's because already... it's the last item. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully not. Let's see, 9A, <laughs> report, discussion, and possible action regarding the acceptance and approval of the Sonoma Glen Unified School District first interim report, 2022-2023. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Uh, second in motion. And any discussion? No, all right. All in favor, aye. Aye. 9B, report, discussion, and possible action to approve resolution number 22-2023-11 in recognition of dedicated service presented to Michael Picard. And, well, I guess we'll do these two at the same time. 9C, report discussion and possible action to approve resolution number 22-2023-12 in recognition of dedicated service presented to Liz Monty Hall. Yeah, I read them, but I thought I had it in a, in a handheld thingy. 
Okay, I can get up. You can read it off the board. <laughs> yes. All right. I wrote. Do you want to do? I've got. He's got a paper copy. Do you want a paper copy? Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm old. I need to listen first. Liz. All right. You can come up here. Oh. Yeah. All right. Bring him. <laughs> Just that's the order in which I got them. Yeah, they need that one. Resolution is yeah. Oh, here we go. So just flip the page. Yeah, you have to say okay. Yeah, that's not it. Mr. Picar. All right. This is my better side. Oh, <laughs> this is mine. That's so ornery. Okay, Mr. Picard. Whereas the Sonoma Unified School District Board of Trustees, students, staff, and community recognize and appreciate the de dedicated services of Mike Picard. And whereas Mike Picard has served as an outstanding trustee of the Sonoma Unified School District Board four years, providing governance and oversight, ensuring students are always our top priority. And whereas Mike Picard has served on the district policy committee, that was a fun one, and the special <laughs> education local plan area serving in the capacity of liaison for Sonol plan inclusive of taking copious notes, mitigating any extraneous information and providing important updates to share with the school board and community. And whereas Mike Picard attended numerous <laughs> school events and activities, including our welcome back to school event, Halloween Parade, Heroes Day, and other school events to provide support and invested understanding of all the educational processes. And whereas Mike Picard has voluntarily expended hours of superior service with unparalleled dedication in wanting to seek out programs, funds, opportunities, including courageously standing his ground, staying the course, and fulfilling his sworn obligation to the school district by his unwavering commitment to the successful attainment of a school bond. Thus ensuring the preservation of our historic building, which enhances the Sonoma students' learning experiences. Huge. <laughs> and whereas Mike Picard worked tirelessly on behalf of the student staff and community in his efforts to ameliorate Sonoma Unified School District, <laughs> and now therefore be it resolved that Sonoma School school and unified district is grateful and appreciative of Mike Picard's unselfish service and devotion to our district, school, students, and community. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mickey, you're in my pictures, oh, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't move. Thank you. Thank okay, you. wait. Did you get a picture? Yes. Well, <laughs> you can walk away with it. They gotta, they'll approve it. All right. Okay. He's, he's, he's afraid. Mo motion to approve. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? Yes. Yeah, so actually, oh, I would say, please. I would like to say um, you did just a fantastic job meeting with and getting the bond through. And, you know, the fact that this came to almost 60% approval from the community, despite the, the, the serious um, objections of, of a portion of the community is tremendous. And it has to, a lot, I mean, you dedicated yourself to it and you got it through. And, you know, it's three years, actually, or four years, if you want to kind of start, you first started thinking about it, the first bond that didn't, and then this I've been one. talking about it for four years. And yeah. then the fact that you, you know, decided to put it through on the last, uh, you know, your, your tail end of your of your uh, yeah. role here. You and get it done. Yeah, I mean, it it's, it's like, <laughs> I don't know where did yeah. that come from. All right, but it, yeah. it's true. Yeah, uh, I think that it deserves a very well felt and hearty thank you from all of us uh, and from the community as a whole. I think that uh, it will come out to be a tremendous effort uh, and effect on the school long term. So thank you very much. Yes. You can say whatever you want. So we've come. We've come. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That was the yeah. discussion. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
thank you. Please. Uh, yeah, just real briefly, uh, I just want to thank you guys for, for this honor. Uh, I was really honored and privileged uh, and you know, humbled by being a board member with this great board. And uh, Denise like is not here. But uh, yeah, Denise was here. She, she brought us on board. And, uh, it's just really uh, just an honor to be part of this community. And, uh, you know, for saying, oh, you passed the bond. Really, I didn't. It was our community that did it. I mean, other people even in this room that maybe weren't in favor of it. So uh, I say to the to those people that you know, thank you for at least uh, you know, voicing your opinions. And uh, you know, it takes it takes a village to to get this through. So uh, um, just keep in mind, board, that there are people in the community that you know are opposed. So you know, be respectful of that. And for other other ways to uh, raise funds to uh, to lessen the, the blows of the taxpayers. And uh, I think you're already on. Uh, started with the uh, masters of governance thing, but I really encourage all of us that our, our entire board did it. Our governance team, Liz, yes, Denise, yes. me, and Molly. Um, and I think it'd be great for all three of you to go through at least five or six. Uh, courses. Yeah. yeah, but really, really valuable to help you understand what your job is as the trustee. Uh, I encourage you all to do that. Thank you. That's it. We're going to tell him to have to sit in the front. <laughs> you. Remember, he made us sit in the front. You don't have to sit in the front. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> sit in the front every time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. 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 Thank you. Ready? You're the best. Now, come back up here. Right. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. We're going the right order. If you want that side too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Liz <laughs> Whereas the Sonoma Unified School District Board of Trustees, students, staff, and community recognize and appreciate the dedicated services of Liz Monty Hall. And whereas Liz Monty Hall has served as an outstanding trustee of the Sonoma Unified School District Board for four years, providing governance and oversight, ensuring students are always our top priority. Whereas Liz Monty Hall has served on the Alameda County School Board Association during her term, serving in the capacity of liaison for Snow Glen, inclusive of being the voice of and promoting the unique needs of this small, as well as providing important updates to share with the school board and community. And whereas Liz Monty Hall has voluntarily expended hours of superior service with untold passion in wanting to seek out programs, funds, opportunities, and courageously promote a school bond in order to optimize the Sonoma Glen students' learning experience. And whereas Liz Monty Hall is an incredibly altruistic and inspirational in her ability to spread eternal optimism, care, goodwill, all while working tirelessly, inclusive of attending numerous school events and activities such as our Welcome Back to School, Halloween parades, graduation, and other school events on behalf of the students, staff, and community. Who else brings pom-poms to the first day of school to welcome students? <laughs> awesome. The kids, yeah. love, the kids love it. And she is incredibly diligent in her quest to ensure Sonoma Glen Unified School District continues to be the shiniest jewel of the school. And now, therefore, be it resolved that Sonoma Glen School and Unified District is grateful to the and appreciative of Liz Monty Hall's generous service and devotion to our district school, school students and community. Liz Monty Hall. Um, I do want to say too that I love that. Um, thank you, Ted, for bringing up that we actually went out for two bonds, and so this group of people there was only five people that would actually walk the precinct, or six people. Diane Everett was one of them, and uh, Connie Derange, and um, Liz, Mike, Denise. We actually walked door to door during that time, so it really was a grueling four years of trying to get the bond passed and. So to be successful at this point when you guys are going off is really meaningful. And I just am so appreciative of both of you and Denise Camromo as well for all your hard work. And you're leaving the school in a good shape. So it's a big gift, a huge gift. We, to we the came school. into it in a good shape. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you did. Okay. You're leaving in a good yes. shape. So I would like to say that it has been an honor to be part of this wonderful school for the past four years. And I can't say enough wonderful things about this school. And it's, it starts from the top. Molly, you, Mickey, Mr. Hoxie, uh, the great teachers, Mr. Doves, Chris, you're amazing. Um, 
IT, Sean, and and Cami and Cheryl, your work, you do so much and it doesn't go unnoticed. You're, you're, you're amazing. You do so much for the school. This school, it it offers more than just education. It it offers um, hands-on support, coddling. Kids are ready for their next stage in life. And what other school does the principal know every student's <laughs> name? I mean, first name. It's this is this is amazing, and it's it's an honor. And Mike, you are awesome, and I, it's to be part of this, be on this board with you. It's it's been wonderful, and your wife Denise too. She's an, an angel, and Ryan, you're awesome. And I know this this school is in good hands with all three of you. So it's been an honor, and I thank you all. Thank you. So, any other discussion? Yeah, so I would just. I would just like to say, um, you know, it's, it is incredibly um, heartening to have someone who dedicated themselves to the school in the way that you have, and the kindness that you've shown to, you know, in that role with everybody. I think people really recognize that, and, and the willingness to go and walk, for example, to the bond and, and so forth. So I'd like to say thank you very much. It's just it's to fall in your shoes and well, in Mike's shoes as well. Um, it's a tall order, and uh, we. I, I think I see for everyone. Yes. Um, we really appreciate the service that you provided and, and the, kind of the, the <clears throat> ideal to follow. Thank well. you. Thank you for those wonderful words. Thank you. Yeah. And especially through the hard work of the bond and the difficulty of going through the COVID time period. COVID and, yeah. and, you, and you have such optimism that's probably more contagious than COVID. So. <laughs> So, word so of the night. motion oh, to approve. Second. And Aye. all approved. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one more. It's like Thank you. We were trying. Thank you. So, we have a quick little recess. We have some fun teas. Some nice little cakes. Please feel free to come have a cake and a coffee and or a water. Come on up. Let's eat. Celebrate my card. Yes. Thank you. I did. I did. And then I got into the bathroom. I had to do Sorry, <laughs> 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 Yeah, <laughs> 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 
So let me know when you need any help or anything. Kind of, you know, I do have things in my life that I do, but I have a lot of time. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. You can use it. Yes. Oh, no. Actually, oh, my gosh. We don't know. ATT is the one that I have. I get over 100 a day. And so I. <laughs> So unless I'm fishing, I put in something, then I don't find it, you know, make the most And I just, I don't even know. You should show it a picture. So where are the pictures just of you when you were doing that? She had her own ponytail. It'll eventually win out. My school was trying to stay on top of it, but it was just like, I'd be lost. So anyway, that'd be good. 
So the school board would have a chance on this day that we, you know, to put the trains and the trains in there. What I have to do now is great. It's to thin out the rides and start getting rid of, you know, discarding the ones that I don't need. Okay, so things like at and Right here, we have a taco. I should walk the I and you're wearing sandals. <laughs> Oh, the rain You must not count. You know, you're you will pay for this if you don't. I mean, I'm talking from experience. I do know. No, no. Uh, so they don't have a visa to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm So Santa Clara purchased. 
of possible action regarding the approval of resolution 22-2023-13 accounting of developer fees 2021-2022 fiscal year and the following funds or account fund 25 capital facilities fund. Seen here, would you like to read the whole thing? Okay. Uh, 
motion to approve. Do we have, do we have any discussions? No. 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 All right. Second. Motion to approve. Approve. Second. Second. Yeah. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item 9E, report discussion and possible action item to approve the 2023-2024 Sunol Glen School Calendar. So this is developed from our teachers in their wisdom. <laughs> so we're screwed. Our teachers in their wisdom. Um, it, it mimics pretty much this year and then it follows like national mandated federal holidays or whatever. So that's plunked in there. And then um, trimester ending dates are aligned as well. Now, the original intent was to try to mirror Pleasanton, who we kind of feed yeah. into. Uh, and then Pleasanton backed off on their fall break, but we still like that with the shorter summers. Um, and I've had some feedback from some people suggesting that although they don't have their fall break and although they may not have the same break in February, can we at least have our spring breaks aligned? So is that something that we are doing on this year? Is that something that maybe we can consider on future years? Just because I've had some feedback in the community. The problem is our contract states that we have to work with the teachers early, and yes. they usually don't approve their calendar, which we used to wait until <clears throat> sometimes March or April. Who doesn't approve Pleasanton? Pleasanton. And they won't even talk to us little guys? Is that the issue? Oh, it's not that they won't talk. They can't they, tell you anything. They don't know. They don't yeah, exactly. Them. They're negotiating with their... So we're approving ours before they are approving Because it's, it's part of the teacher's contract to approve their calendar. Well, if we can get our teachers to talk to their teachers. I mean, <laughs> well, the president's right here. Because so. then we've got kids who, like families who will have some kids in high school, some kids in middle school, elementary school, and they're going, that yeah. stinks because now we've yeah, got two spring breaks that we right. can't all go do something. Yeah, so, the whole spring break thing is a little quirky because of the way Easter moves around. It is. Speaking, speaking. Yeah, uh, no, that's true. And... At least this calendar, the uh, the intent was to move that spring break to the first week uh, in okay, April, April, which is typically when Pleasanton would do it. So there's hope. I ah. think I think that was the sort of the underlying intention that perhaps it would match. Uh, but as far as you know, 100 percent guarantee, or we know for sure. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. They Hopefully. don't. They take a long time. I think because they're a bigger district and they have more vetting that yeah. goes through, whereas ours is the teachers meet. They, you know, maybe they meet and talk about it and then meet another month or something yeah. and, and approve. So it's a pretty speedy well, process. Don't get me wrong. I really like our calendar personally, but when my kids are in high school, yeah. I'm like, eh, it but, 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 it'd be nice if they all lined up, but yeah. they're pretty close. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> close enough. Well, yeah, but, yeah, the beginning, you know, the big things are when does school end and when does it start? And, you know, usually they're pretty close. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you just have these little quirky days that sort of boot things up. Like, you yeah. know, do you have five minimum days for conferences or do you have three? Uh, some yeah. districts are taking the day after Halloween off and that maybe changes their President's Day holiday. And so, you yeah. know, it, it sounds really simplistic, but then all of a sudden you just get a little day here, a day there, and it, it ends up bouncing around. So, yeah. But I think what I heard Ryan, Mr. Jurgen, would say is that. Um, uh, that maybe the Halloween whatever is fine, but it's what the family vacation planning. And I think Thanksgiving is always Thanksgiving and all schools pretty much take that whole week off or the three days for sure. And so we pretty much align even with all the high schools that, we, that our kids go back to. And then um, same thing with the winter holiday is usually third and fourth week of December, the fourth week in December, first week of January. So there's no line there. It's this, it sounds like the spring break is- Yeah. Am I allowed to say that? Hmm? You might not say anything. Uh, technically, no, but shoot it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've lost it. Yeah, but you know, the same thing is also you got to remember a lot of our kids go and do things in Pleasanton, like uh, boards, clubs, everything else, and they have their schedule, and they take so they have, they'll like, oh, we're not going to have singing today. We're not going to have guitar this week because we got this thing from vacation on. Then the next week you're on vacation, mm -hmm. so you just missed two weeks. He only was going to miss one in the first place. So you're missing all the clubs, sports, whatever, academics, whatever it is. It messes that up for the other kids because they should be in a Pleasanton schedule. If that's oh. where they're going to be at. Yeah. But, I mean, I think Pleasanton should switch to match us personally. Yeah, but, I yeah. yeah I'm just <laughs> so, not so yeah, uh, this year's looking good. As far as every indicator, the intention is that spring break is going to match. Yeah. And, 
And we also balance that with, it's really nice to have the calendar approved early so people can plan exactly. on it. Exactly, and parents do complain which, if they which don't Which is also, yeah. which is <laughs> also really good. <laughs> yeah. So, so thank you, you for- to Pleasant and say, hey, here's a really good idea. Well, <laughs> just the history, uh, and Ronnie, I don't know if you remember this, but they, we were on a calendar committee Yes. Back uh, 10 years ago in Dublin, Pleasanton, Sonol, Livermore, we were all in a committee and everybody was aligning to what, uh, what this vision, this vision, not Sonol's vision, this correct, was the vision, the correct, the correct vision. Yeah. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Pleasanton, and Pleasanton was actually leading the charge on this. And then Pleasanton went back to their school board and there were school board members who had um, summer, programs. summer programs themselves. Mm -hmm. They were the owners of summer programs. And so they voted again, the teachers and the teacher union was going to sue <laughs> their own school that. board. Wow. Do you remember that? And yeah. so, but so we're our own district. We're not beholden to Pleasanton, nor is Pleasanton yeah. beholden to us, but we did like the align. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we're the small dog. Why is the tail wagging the dog? So we were trying to, or let the tail wag the dog. Because it's the smartest so part of the dog. We were trying to, <laughs> yeah, we were trying to align with them. But our, our, I was really proud of our teachers and our school board at that time, because we said, well, that they they were the ones that kind of went back on their word and or on this three years worth of work. And mm -hmm. we sallied forth, hoping that they'd come around. And interestingly enough, they are better aligned because they used to start two weeks after us. Mm -hmm. So it's been slowly creeping to further alignment. They're extraordinarily jealous of our um, September and February or ski week breaks. Mm -hmm. Um, but they, they, the reason the fall break doesn't work for them is because they're a high school district and finals. Anyway, sorry, that's probably yeah. way too much minute. But we try, I guess what I'm trying to say is we have pretty robust conversations about this still mm -hmm. and trying to align because we agree if, if we can, it would be great. It just really, really, there's a lot of things right. that get in the way. So, all right. Sorry. Any other discussion? Sorry Board? about that. No, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Motion to approve the calendar. Second. All right. All approved. Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, there you go. Now you guys have it done first. <laughs> there you go, Sid. I like to tell the magic. <laughs> Send it out to him, please. I have sent it to him. Good. I'll do it again. Uh, item 10, uh, the consent items 10A. Of, hmm? We're going to do all. Uh, 10A, approval of minutes October 11th, 2022. Uh, 10B, approval of warrants. One, warrants dated 10 13, 2022. Uh, two, warrant stated 10 25, 2022. Three, warrant stated 11 4, 2022. Four, warrant stated 12 1, 2022. Five, warrant stated 12 5, 22. And consent item 10 C, approval of personnel documents December 2022. You can approve these all as a whole. Yeah. yeah. Motion to approve. Yeah, second. I bring the end of them. Any discussions? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item 11, calendar for future meetings, uh, future board meetings, January 10th, 2023. Uh, 20, January 24th is not a board meeting. That's a board workshop. Uh, and 11C, February 7th, 2023, board meeting. And 11D, March 14th, 2023, board meetings. Motion to approve. All Any discussion? Yeah. All right. All, 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 all in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, 12, closing comments. Linda, did you have any comments you wanted to share? I have two things, and yeah. I realize we're probably going to be having to put this on next time's agenda. Okay. But I'm hoping we can consider the following things. Okay. One thing um, is if we can find the funds, and I see certain things that are coming through to have a viable and um, continue through the year foreign language program. And even if it was to meet um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and if you could not take it, the time out of the school hours to have it after school or before school for those kids that want to take it. And there's a number of reasons why. And I think it could also be a way to attract more um, middle school students and that's the one area, you know, 29 in, in the seventh and eighth grades, it, and it would help to attract more to that particular. So I know that we're talking extra cost, but there's also a need um, at Foothill High School when the kids go there, if they want to get into certain AP classes, they need this point, you know, they need the points for having taken 
um, a foreign language pro program. And what we have now, the option just to take it for a trimester isn't enough to give them that. So that's one thing. Obviously, we'll have to pick a language and probably Spanish is the one that is most useful. So that would be, and maybe you could find some way that that teacher, whether it's part-time part or whatever, can give a little bit to the younger grades so that they're getting introduced to it and starting to have some ability with the Spanish to help them along the way. That also helps with a, a private school sort of description there. Okay, so the other so thing- So can I just- I, <coughs> What's that? Are you gonna take the agenda? What's that? Uh, yeah, yeah, so we, um, we did have Spanish. Um, <laughs> there's several layer, everything's more complex than you think. So um, the way that our schedule works, we're not, um, we are not single subject credentialed people. We're self-contained is our seven, six, seven, eight grade classes. And so what that means, and we're, we're little. So at another school, you might have a Spanish teacher and they teach 150 kids. They have uh -huh. five sections of 30 kids each. So we would have, like our electives are running about 12 kids each and it's one section. So you would have to hire, even if we built it up to 20 mm -hmm. kids, you would have to find a person willing to teach for, for 20, per, no, it's 14, 15%. Um, even to your point, if you expanded it to the younger kids, that would probably be a part-time teacher. Um, they're really hard to find. They have to be single subject. They have to be subject. single subject Spanish. It's all they can teach per the, per the credentialing laws. And then um, you have to find somebody. There's a shortage, first of all. We did find somebody. We're excited. She was wonderful, Wanda. And then, but then what happened is the enrollment dropped off because it was a choice, an elective choice. And then she was willing to work that little tiny um, amount of time, but trying to find somebody that could work full time in a bigger school versus, you know, and the reason she did it is because she was retired. So mm -hmm. she didn't really need the money. So they're out there, but it's really hard. So to the point about the younger kids, um, trying to push in another option for kids when the teachers are really stressed to get through their curriculum. So even when we pull kids out once a month for garden, um, once a week for library, once a week for science specialist, um, we are really blessed with a lot of programs, but there, there's already a feeling of you're taking my kids too much because I have to get through this reading science of reading program phonics. You know, they have to get through all that. So anyway, it's, it's a great idea. We hear it does crop up every once in a while. We have parents that that's how it came up even before. And we're like, okay, let's see if we can find somebody. And it's not, it's not even the money. I mean, the money is a part of it. It's, it's the other daunting, the scheduling, the finding a person. Yeah, those are the things. So I'm not saying no, I'm always interested in finding it. Yeah, okay. We can look into it. I just know that it has been um, a problem for kids going to Foothill. Well, and, and then that program, it. by the way, was not a uh, high school credentialed. Um, they, because of the way our schedule worked, they did not get the same level that led them to be able to move into Spanish too, for example. So um, we can't consider it a full year of Spanish instruction. There's not enough minutes. Even mm -hmm. like even if you were to do three days a week no. and pass in, no, it has no, because they, they in a regular junior high school, a comprehensive junior high school, they would do it five days a week for 50 minutes. And our elective program here is a hundred. Yeah, I know it's way small. small. Yeah. It's small. Okay. But okay. it's a it's a challenge. I mean, you're hitting the you're hitting the nail on the head. But these are the challenges that we try to think creatively to try to resolve, to try to help, at least set for the child to have some exposures. And there's there's pros and cons to a small school. There's a lot of pros. Yeah. We're identifying. Yeah, one cons. of the cons. Yeah. And so, true. And, and when we're talking about trying to attract a, a level of student, you know, when you've got 29 <clears throat> in seventh grade, and, and well, I know you break up the kindergarten. So 34 in kindergarten isn't necessarily 40, I mean, 30 for in the classroom, but just we need to pull more of the middle school. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to ask us to consider is getting as soon as possible an engineer, a st uh, um, structural engineer to do a study on the main building. That's your There are yep. a number of members of the community are, that are concerned about um, the safety of the, because questions have been raised and you know this amount of 3.1 million has been placed on this. And so, um, and we have small children in that building. 
And so if something were to happen and we don't have this to back it up, it is a legal problem. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's what I, and I don't know what it would cost. I'm hearing probably 20, maybe more thousand dollars to do that kind of study, but we should be looking at doing that yeah. as soon as possible. And, and at our next board meeting, we will have John Ice on the board, uh, uh, advisor, advisor, advisor and then we're bond advisor sorry and we're also going to be <laughs> trying to invite the Chad engineer Hamilton. so typically through construction projects yeah. you have the engineer and mr hoxie who will come up with the items that are priorities then when the engineer comes up with the plan you then bring in an engine sorry when architect. the architect and mr hoxie come up with the plan the engineers then are brought in at that point to then engineer said proposals and plan and then after engineering approval, then we go to the contract. So wouldn't we be getting like bids from a number of engineers and we wouldn't Likely. necessarily, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's all. Perfect, thank you. So we'll talk about that at the <laughs> January meeting when we talk a little bit more about the bond and the next steps for getting bond oversight committee. And Mr. Hoxie is gonna have a fun time spending that money <laughs> fixing up this building. So get your Christmas list written up uh, for the next few years. <laughs> And uh, we'll, we'll get that going. So, uh, any other closing comments? Mr. Romo? None for me. No? Perfect. Well, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending. We've had a great meeting. Uh, and thanks for putting up with your new president. And I will go ahead and adjourn Here's our meeting. Your nice and this, this gavel, gavel, I don't know if you caught it earlier, but this gavel <laughs> is uh, my grandfather, who I'm named after, uh, was a district judge in Idaho. And he has passed, but we've kept this gavel in our family. And so my parents suggested I use it if I'm the president. So I adjourn this meeting.